Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India See, this is the course outline generally. I have listed out uh, 12 topics starting from historical development, then rotor configuration, elements of hovering and forward flight, sorry vertical flight, then forward flight, performance, rotor blade idealization, flap response, trim and uh, coupled flap lag torsion dynamics and then introduction to certain stability problems. So, this is a vast uh, number of topics are covered, but we will go slowly because it is a very ambitious thing to cover everything. But towards the end if time permits I will just give a brief introduction about some of the issues which one has to tackle because unless you understand this basic stuff you cannot directly go and then solve that you can address those problems. They are from a practical point of view what are the real issues that is why the topic is uh, given as helicopter theory dynamics and aeroelasticity. Please note that dynamics is very very important for this course that is rigid body dynamics I am talking about later comes flexibility, structural dynamics that is important, but at this level rigid body dynamics is essential. So, you can brush up of a rotating system that is essential okay. and I have given a list of uh, references okay, about uh, listed uh, 10 books. I will go through one by one. The first book is Gesso and Myers Aerodynamics of Helicopter which is a 1952 but it is uh, available one copy in the library and uh, it is out of print, but it is a good book basically very very in the for a beginner it is good to read that. The second book is Bramwell which is a 1976 it was published in London of course another copy has come but he is no more it is difficult to follow that book, but it has a lot of information, okay, lot of information, but difficult. Here in the beginning it is okay, towards the end you sometimes you will not know how those things are obtained, how the various expressions are obtained. Then there is a Stepniewski road raving aerodynamics, this is a door publication, this also has lot of information, but it is uh, difficult to read that book. Then Wayne Johnson this is about 1000 pages, uh, there is also helicopter theory, this is a good book. See all these books later I would say, if you know helicopters you can understand the book. You cannot say that I will start reading the book and then understand, okay. that is where the problem starts because the dynamics is really important. Of course, I have my lecture notes, copies which are there in the library, I do not know how many copies are there, there are sufficient number and there I have given all my derivation starting from first principles, starting from basics and uh, please note in this course I cannot derive the equations in the class because if I derive then I will spend enormous time only in deriving and then at the end uh, what I require is the result but then most of my time is spent on just algebra. So, I will be using PowerPoint, but the in between steps you have to read, understand how they are obtained. Okay. And uh, Pat Field, this is uh, Prouty is about performance mainly and then Pat Field is about flight dynamics. So, you will find that the focus of each book is slightly different. You will find certain book will refer some topics, but some other book you do not even see that. Okay. 
and uh, you will get to know only at the end of the course, oh, this is what I mentioned in the first lecture, what I told you. Then Leishman, this is about helicopter aerodynamics. And then Snedden, this is, I do not have that book, but it is a basic helicopter. Then Bailawa, which is a structure, this from an industry, is a bit slightly different. So, you will find that uh, I follow my notes, but I have all these books, all the books I have pretty much except uh, this Netan because I find it is a little low level, so I did not buy. These are kind of books which you require for a helicopter theory. There is other class of books which are like a pilot flying. How do you fly? That is from the pilot point of view. They will also call helicopter aerodynamics something like that, but it is like a flight manual. Lot of pictures, but uh, you do not see any equation and uh, only words. It is very difficult to follow, but because for a person who is not flying, he does not know what that means. But the person who is flying, for him equations are not important, he is more worried about how the vehicle f behaves or flies or what happens. Okay. So, there is a difference between the kind of books which are this and the books which are pilot manuals. Then of course, you can have the maintenance manual and etcetera, etcetera. Okay. We will not get into the maintenance part and uh, of course, the grading like I said, you have a midterm, final and uh, assignment term paper. Term paper, you have to every one, I will give one topic. That depends on your interest plus it is relevant to helicopters because I want to know how many have really registered because I find uh, 15, then 7 added, then 2 deleted. So, I have to fix how many. Once the list comes, I will list out the topics. I will say each one is going to do one topic and that is uh, about 30 percent weightage uh, and assignments I will give, but I do not, I will give the problems, you have to work it out. If you have doubt, you can ask me, but I am not really asking every day you submit this assignment, but certain things I will ask you to submit okay? and uh, that is about the overall picture of the I would say the course outline, I will try to make it like a story, the whole course. Okay, now, we start the course. Let us see what the helicopter, this is what 15 January 1909, what uh, Wilbur Wright, Wright brothers, he said about it. So, he says like all novices, we began with the helicopter in childhood, but soon saw it had no future and dropped it. The helicopter does with great labor what the balloon does without labor and is no more fitted than the balloon for rapid horizontal flight. If its engine stops, it must fall with deathly violence, for it can neither float like a balloon nor glide like an airplane. The helicopter is much easier to design than an airplane, but it is worthless when done. Okay? So, this is what the helicopter. Now, that is his statement. Later, you will have a counter statement that I will give at the end. So, what is a helicopter? We will go slowly one by one. Very simple. Okay? We will start with the Key, key difference between an aircraft and a helicopter. Of course, all flying vehicles, we need to have lift to support the weight and you need uh, propulsion for moving forward because you need to lift, you need to have propulsion. But then once it is up in the air, you need control. Okay? So, basically you need to have lift propulsion control. These are the three main thing and of course, structure which comes later that is all part of it. I am just saying key, 
but in the helicopter all these three please note that all the three left propulsion and control they are all done by the rotor only the rotor system has to do all three functions and you will find some of the terminologies which are used in helicopters they may contradict what is used in aircraft so that is why those things will be introduced as we go along because what you call thrust in a aircraft it is for propulsion but in the helicopter the word thrust is for lifting okay so there are differences which we will introduce you have to get used to that okay but if you look at an aircraft you have wing to take care of the lift propulsion you have separately jet or a propeller any of this units then control you basically do with aileron rudder elevators etc this is a traditional aircraft but the key difference after this is helicopters can land and take off from any terrain that is the you don't need a runway okay it can land in a rooftop it can land in a dense air so even of course you need some clearance okay so whereas aircraft cannot do that so it is like a vertical take off and landing you may call it vtol but this is the advantage of the helicopters and another this you will learn as we go along because this is like you need to calculate it can hover with minimum power because you may say hovering capability you can have in different types of vehicles but the power required to hover for each class of vehicle may be different so helicopters have the advantage of having minimum power to hover for the same weight you have to take the weight as the baseline okay now let us look at the i'll go for the historical development knowing the key difference between the helicopters and the aircraft what are the key differences you learned difficulties when they were building helicopters please understand and then i'll go through historical development these are very common for aircraft structural weight should be minimum that means you must choose a proper material to design your structure then for the rotor you need to have a strong light structure for blade and hub because the kind of force just for a idea you know a typical blade which is of course the indian blade i will take indian rotor helicopter which is the advanced light helicopter the blade mass is about 64 kg around 64 and it rotates about uh, 300 plus rpm okay now this at the root the force you get the centrifugal force is of the order of few 100000 newton okay so it's a tremendous amount of force it comes at the root where you attach so you need to have strong structure for blade hub everything otherwise you will simply tear apart and of course control including torque because you are something is rotating so if you don't have a compensating there is an anti torque device it will also start fuselage will be rotating okay so how do you balance the torque these are the problems these are all there right at the beginning so how different people different people in the sense 
these are all not government supported projects or anything like that it's like a purely personal enthusiasm that's all they just want to fly they designed the different aircraft different thing tested it but it is because of the development of all these individuals in various places finally it came to the today what we call it as a helicopter okay as a history if you go suppose i'll give first is i just brought because this is a very interesting thing so i showed chinese stuff bc which is actually before 400 this is what the chinese stuff you all know that's all this is a helicopter very first but it is a toy now okay no more but nature also has certain things very nice because this i picked up my trip from somewhere this is actually two blades uh, if you drop it see so i don't know whether you can see you can capture this huh? but maybe from a height maybe i'll throw it and then okay so this is a two blade another one is a maple leaf which is a single blade but this i found it very interesting so even if you see but if you have a high speed camera you can really look at how it really turns then it starts descending okay this is i call it nature okay this is man made this is nature this is one because i found two bladed it's nice so i picked up couple of them and brought it i don't know the name because if you want to know where i picked up when i went to andaman i saw in some place the andamans this one so i picked a lot so i went home i brought all this okay because the single one maple seed that is there but this is a very nice interesting thing and it can float also there is a seed like thing it floats in water it can go so it's a very nice i thought this is a nature's rotor okay then you have 15th century leonardo da vinci i'll show that with that picture which is actually leonardo da vinci's picture is this okay this is the we call it air screw that been air is a medium you just screw through that and you go up that's all okay it's a nice concept and uh, because this is a famous picture they always show then of course on my dial this is the 18th century you say george kelly he made some and there are other people also i would say he made some models basically with uh, rubber band and uh, rotor just rubber bands that's all these are all ties you may see one rotor 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 and another one horizontal something but all these things had it's a nice concept that you can go you can climb but it has no bearing on real big helicopters till that time people are thinking how to fly how to go that is all but then if you really want to know the development of helicopters started with the 19th century i would say it was uh, realized first i'll give some details about that we got uh, steam engines so steam powered models were made small couple of kgs that's all okay and they were able to fly it was demonstrated to various uh, uh, what do you call academies science academies i would call it science academy i will give you the 19th century first half okay i'll write the name that is because these are because if you understand history you will appreciate
this is in England, this is 19th century okay. and then uh, Enrico Forla Nini, this is Italy. Okay, they built steam powered engines and about this was 3.5 kg, of course, with rotor they showed models. Okay. But then Edison, that is a very interesting thing, they said lack of reliable light engine, that means power, if you want to go up, you need to put some power. So, the first thing that came up was power. Now, the power requirement, Thomas Edison, you will be surprised. He said that, hey, unless you have an engine, weight to power, this is the engine, do not bother about rest of the things, just the engine, if it is less than 1 or 2 kg per HP. Unless you achieve that, you just cannot fly. Now, I can give a little background story, present day turbo shaft 0.2 kg per HP, okay? that is of the TARDA engine. Because we also did some, uh, see in the 1980, in uh, when I was a student in uh, IAC Bangalore, there was a project to design a rotor. So, the engine chosen was a scooter engine, Bajaj scooter engine and about four of us, because at that time we were just beginning in the helicopter, the 80s. So, we designed a big rotor, rotor diameter is more than about I think 13, 14 feet and then we put that, we were able to rotate, the rotor was fine, it is rotating, no problem and then we had a big platform on which the rotor was mounted, the engine was mounted, then when it wanted to lift, of course, then he said uh, it was not even lifting because the power later was okay, remove the engine, keep it outside. So, the engine was removed from the structure itself. Then from that you give a shaft with a universal coupling and then engine was removed, this was able to lift and with that we closed the project, we said okay, I think the professor closed it, he said okay, we demonstrated lifting. The reason why I am saying is we did not know, at the time I did not know honestly because I started learning about helicopters only after my PhD. Then you realize, today you remember a lot of people say, I want flying car, please understand. Yes, you can make a car fly, because it should go up, but please understand whether your rotor and the power and the weight, whether it is sufficient, because I remember few years back somebody came, he said, I will put four fans and then I will lift it. How? You just put something means it will not, nothing will lift. You have to see whether the engine has the capability to lift your weight. Unless you have that basic thing, you will not be able to lift a helicopter. So, that, that is the reason I said that this is very, very important. If you are going to design a helicopter, aircraft, you have a wing because wing lifts. Here, actually, the rotor has to lift the engine weight, that is the problem, it is like lifting it like this vertically. Okay. Aircraft you need to give only propulsive and uh, you need to overcome only the drag and if you see the aerofoil lift to drag, drag is very, very small, 100, but 100 of the power you give, you can lift the weight, whereas here you have to give all the 100. Okay, that is the key difference in helicopters. Okay. Now, how the word uh, helicopter came? 
it's actually this was coined by 1863 by Frenchman Amecourt. It is called uh, helix and patron that is the spiral wing. Then it became the helicopter as the general word for this class of rotating wing. Now people call it rotary wing vehicles, you may call it helicopter because sometimes people use the word rotary wing okay? and these two are used uh, you know, commonly in the publications. Some people use rotary wing, some people use helicopters, it does not matter. But the real development of helicopters as a vehicle, you will see it started in 20th century. 1903 aircraft flew December, that is Wright Brothers. But most of the developments in terms of building a machine, now I will show a few of the sample pictures of how people built various machines. Okay. You will have an idea how the development was going on in building this uh, helicopter. Okay. This is, I will show this the 20th century, this is in my notes, it is there, lot of pictures, I have also a CD where I put my notes. Okay. 1904, Renard France, then Paul Carnot 1907, please are, remember aircraft flew 1903. Okay. I will just give some, this is a one of the interesting, we constructed a first man carrying helicopter with two contra rotating rotors of 6 meter diameter in tandem, that is one behind the other. The total weight of the vehicle was 260 kg and was powered by 24 HP engine. This helicopter achieved an altitude of 0.3 meters for about 20 seconds. Okay and it has problems with stability. However, Carnot became the first person to succeed in actual helicopter flight. 0.3 meters, 20 seconds. Okay. This is of that order, please don't, I, as you go along you will see really how people were struggling to build. Okay. Then of course, this is again 1907, this has a four rotor helicopter. So, you see you have to have first engine, that was the first re it was realized. Steam engine was built, but then they made only models. Then came the IC engine, internal combustion engine. Now with the internal combustion engine only, the development started going on in the helicopter field. and. Uh, this is another Louis Charles Bruco. He built a machine which he called helicoplane. It had four rotors, eight meter diameter rotors, gross weight 580, engine 45 HP. This made a tethered flight at an altitude of one meter for about one minute. This is in 1907. Then I will give some group in US. This is a father son combination in 1920 22 Emily Berliner and Henry Berliner their father son combination they built a two engine coaxial vehicle please understand now you see there are two types of how different different geometries are there that is why I want to indicate to you each group was trying different configurations. Okay. This is a one below the other, same thing, he also made another one side by side. The earlier one is tandem and the other group had four in a crash bar. He built a side by side helicopter in which forward flight control was achieved by tilting the rotor shaft. These vehicles were highly unstable. So, first you want to lift the vehicle. After lifting, the problem comes on stability. 
So, for lifting the engine requirement, when you go to stability, you have to understand the vehicle dynamics. Okay. So, without that, you cannot achieve stability. You may lift, but you do not have any control over the vehicle. Okay. So, you see how the development really went about in building a vehicle and of course, you may know because there are a lot of things. Sikorsky, he was in Russia earlier, he is a Russian, 1910, he built a vehicle with coaxial rotor. It could lift its own weight, but not with a pilot, that is all, nobody can see. But later he moved to US, okay. So, initially he was in Russia. In Russia, he was trying to build a coaxial, but there is another Russian in 1912. He built a Uriev two bladed main rotor, small anti torque tail rotor. This helicopter did not make any successful flight. Okay. Now, I will give you there are a lot of pictures, different groups of people, and uh, this is in Austria. Lieutenant Petrosi and von Karman constructed a tethered contra rotating coaxial helicopter with three engines of 60 HP each. The rotor diameter was 6 meters. The vehicle was designed as a platform, observation platform. Even now, people talk about observation platforms, but it made several flights but had control problems. All of them because they were able to lift. This is an interesting vehicle, George D. Botesat, it is in USA 1922. He built a large helicopter with four, six bladed rotors at the ends of intersecting beams. Now, you know quad rotor everybody is building, intersecting beams. Good control behavior was obtained by utilizing differential collective. You will learn about collective what it means later. This vehicle made several flights with passengers up to an altitude of 4 meters to 6 meters. This was the first successful rotor craft which was ordered by US Army, but later it was abandoned due to mechanical complexity of the vehicle because you have 4 rotors, each one has to be controlled with different RPM etcetera. Okay. Then this is another very interesting configuration. This is in France again, Entien, I do not know how do you pronounce O mission, okay, built a machine with four two bladed rotors to provide lift, five horizontal propellers, horizontal propeller means propeller is like this, plane of rotation is this, for attitude control that means pitch roll etcetera, two propellers for propulsion one propeller for yaw control. So, how many rotors he has this vehicle all powered by 120 HP engine. It had 13 separate transmission systems. The vehicle made several flights and set a distance record of 360 meters. Okay. Now, why I am bringing this kind of various configurations is today there is a lot of interest among students to build I do not know, micro vehicle, flying vehicle, they will say I will put 6 rotors, I will put 10 rotors, I will put this, I will put one more for forward flight, I will make this. It is good, but one should also know people tried similar thing long time back okay. and what are the problems they faced. It is important one should understand the history because history teaches a lot of things even in aviation, it is not writing equations later is all fine, but please understand all these people built, I do not think the level of mathematical knowledge what we have today, they had, it is for sure because I do not think they had, but they tried, they built, but it is with conviction, it is like discipline, they try to make each person tries because let me try this vehicle, let me try this vehicle okay. and that is how the development started. 
Now, this is another configuration. You look at it. This looks like uh, Wright Brothers no biplane, but he has it is in Spain 2026. Raval Pescara built a helicopter with two coaxial rotors of four blades having a diameter 6. This was powered by 120 HP engine. For forward flight control, he warped the biplanes to change their pitch angle. How he warped, I do not know the technical details, but he was twisting. Okay. You will learn later. So, he was the first to demonstrate, please note, cyclic pitch control. Earlier, I used the word collective. Okay. Now, there is another word cyclic. So, these are key terminologies in the helicopter flight. Okay. This vehicle set a distance of 736 meter, but again stability problems. Okay. Now, a little deviation will go and uh, that is the auto gyro. I okay. will give a brief history on the auto gyro. This is Sierra in Spain. What happened was, see he wanted to build an aircraft, he built an aircraft, but then the at low speed the aircraft stalled. He said that I want to fly at a very low speed, that was his thing. So, he was the first one to design something called an auto gyro. What it means is there is a propeller you see, this is like an aircraft and of course, a small wing is there. This rotor is a freewheeling rotor, it is like a windmill what it does is the rotor will be kept at this angle. Once it is at like what we showed from the seed which when it is coming down, wind is going up. So, it is rotating right and then it is slows down. That means, wind is going through the rotor and because of that the rotor starts rotating like your windmill. And then once it rotates at some angle it lifts because the cross section of every blade is an aerofoil. Okay. So, you get the lift and he does not need any anti torque because it is a free wheeling and he can fly very low speed. That was the he built that vehicle, but what happened was, but you need to go forward speed it cannot just hover because you need a forward speed for the wind like you see kids when they run with that small fan type in the paper there, when wind blows it starts rotating same thing. So, you run instead of that you move the aircraft a little slowly it starts spinning and then it lifts, but what he found was the problem he faced because why he is listed in uh, you consider this as the rotor disc okay. and this is rotating, this is wind is coming this way. So, when it is rotating you will find here you will have a because this is omega times some smaller velocity then this is the forward velocity the relative wind is additive because you have a large relative wind, but once this goes this side the relative wind subtracts. So, he find on one side I am getting increased lift other side reduced lift. So, as a result the movement the vehicle takes off it was rolling. Okay. So, what he did that was his why he is regarded as his ingenuity. He said that because there is a rolling movement that is generated on the vehicle when it starts. So, I am going to if you do not want rolling movement I will put a hinge okay, 
listen like a door because it is rotating centrifugal force will pull lift force will go and it is moment transfer to the fuselage is minimized okay so he was this is a great engineering solution and it was successful he built 500 auto gyros okay he formed a company he sold it was a very successful vehicle. This is about 1925 27, that is Sierra, this is 28. Okay. Later, this is called the, please note, I will use the word flap. Flap means this is again a new word for rotor blade going up and down, that is out of plane of rotation that is called flap, okay. but it is rotating, but it is going up and down. Now, he introduced a flap hinge, the first and that is how he is successful and is credited for that engineering solution. Okay. Then of course, subsequently there are other problems happened, when it was going up and down you know that centrifugal force is pulling this way, lift force is doing this way, but he will start getting because when it moves your center of gravity of the blade is coming moving back and forth from the axis of rotation. Then you will create Coriolis, the Coriolis will be in the plane. Okay? That means, if you move your blade like this, you are going to get a force in this plane and if it is not strong enough, you will break it. So, there was a crash. Then he said, oh, this is another problem. Go and put one more hinge in the plane normal to that, that is called lead lag, okay. lead lag hinge. Okay. So, he put that lead lag. So, you see from dynamics, now I can go back, but there are certain uh, failures happen, I will not name anything. See, there are certain interesting thing, you put up, there are certain absorbers which are put in uh, rotors, not all rotors. If you want to reduce the vibration, there is something called a vibration absorber system, pendulum absorbers and I am just giving a story. Initially, they put a pendulum with a 2 kg weight, which was fine, it is reducing the vibration, but then they put 4 kg with the same attachment, but then when in flight, it flew off. Okay because the attachment whatever you have, because if you have 4 kg, the in plane Coriolis force is tremendous, you are just increasing it and as a result that whole thing broke. So, you have to see from a dynamics point of view, whenever you have anything system which is rotating, which is moving, flapping up and down and it also moves back and forth, you need to evaluate the dynamic force precisely. That is why the dynamics becomes very important in the rotor blade. Please understand this rotor blade is like I said 6 meters, that is a just for sample, the blade uh, radius normally around 6 meters you can say. There are blades which are 13 meters long. Okay. The diameter is more than 100 feet, there are helicopters. So, please imagine that is a very long blade, it is highly flexible. That is why when the helicopter is parked, you find the blades are down. So, you are now dealing with the system, a beam you can say, because it is a long beam, a beam which is like you can do this and you are rotating. So, you have to be careful about the dynamics of that. Okay. So, that is why structural dynamics 
is very very important in the rotor and he gave an engineering solution now it is used in in this form or in some other form so as we go along in the course you will see oh flap hinges by shear wall that is why he is given even though this is not a real helicopter he did not build the helicopter because it cannot hover okay then this is another uh, uh, vehicle which was henry fock this is in uh, i think it is in germany okay he built a helicopter with two rotor side by side but you see a small propeller like thing actually that is not a propeller that is a cooling this is a rotor to cool the engine it's like in your car your radiator you have some small fan it is like that it's not a propulsive thing and he built this this rotor had articulated hub articulated means you put a hinge later i will explain what is articulated and he has directional control and vertical of course he had put a tail it also has a shape of a aircraft but wings are not there the rotors are the wings this vehicle set records for speed 122 kilometers per hour altitude more than 2 kilometers and endurance 1 hour 20 minutes and set a distance record of 224 kilometers this was one of the successful vehicle but then you go to igor sikorsky in us in 19 3941 first he built because he moved from russia to us vs it called vs 300 1941 which had a single three bladed main rotor a tail rotor see here in this picture you will see there is one rotor here one rotor here there is one rotor here and then one main these are two horizontal thing initially his model had this later he removed these two horizontal rotors put them in the middle as one rotor later that also he removed okay that one was a r4 a derivative of vs was constructed that is why it was reduced to two and finally to one vertical tail rotor 1942 r4 a derivative of vs 300 was constructed this helicopter had single main rotor and one tail rotor main rotor diameter take 11.6 meters so you see about and then weight 1100 kg 185 hp engine this model went into production and several hundred were built during world war 2 basically for medical evacuation so the helicopters first used in military was for evacuation okay and please note sikorsky's vehicle is considered to be the first practical truly operational mechanically simple and controllable that's all so till this it was all helicopter development 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 once you have a successful vehicle very successful in the sense a vehicle which can fly of course it had problem problems will always there even today problems are there but this is a successful vehicle practically operational okay now after you have built the helicopter then you will say okay now i have built a helicopter now what is going on what is that i have to do because helicopters are built they are flying okay so you start thinking about what next it is actually in improving one is in the like you said performance which goes the technology because the developments now 
mainly in the field of improving the capability of the vehicle with increased with a further technology improvement you will also have improvement in the vehicle. So, today nobody will say I am going to build a helicopter, you can build a helicopter it is everybody knows what you are going to do because already people have built it. Then you say what technology you are going to use and what is the configuration you are going to choose. How? So, the focus that is 1942 please remember now I think I will show you of course, I will give some pictures here uh, the type of configurations you all know what are the various configuration of a helicopter if somebody has you have a single main rotor one tail rotor of course, this tail rotor here it is a fan in fin it is called a fenestron because the open tail you can have another one the same tail rotor put inside a shroud ok. This is few companies make only recently. Then there is another scheme which was start you do not need a tail rotor, but you have a jet rotor of course, it was abandoned this is just for a picture I am showing. So, you have a jet at the two end and it keeps spinning. So, you have a jet rotor that means, it can lift no problem, but of course, dynamic various other other issues will come, but you do not need a tail because this is a torque transfer is not there it is a freewheeling. Then you have another configuration which is the coaxial one below the other, but today this type of configuration is built only by Russians that is a Kamo helicopter because they have specialized they make this helicopters. Then what is the use one of the uses because it is a compact you do not have a tail which is long hanging there ok. There are advantages disadvantages the disadvantage is tail requires power that means, you actually spend power not for lifting, but for just having torque control. Whereas, here both the rotors I am using one is in one direction another one another direction and the vehicle is compact, but then controls is more complex. Then uh, you have the configuration of uh, this uh, side by side of course, this is I just showed the picture uh, this was a project V 22 Osprey see it went on for more than 50 years ok 40 50 years US Navy was pumping money to build this side by side rotor ok you is a tilt rotor configuration. Another one is of course, pure helicopter mode this is the tandem advantage in tandem please understand you can shift your CG to a large the CG travel is more whereas, in the conventional helicopter the CG travel is highly limited please understand it is may be less than may be 20 30 centimeters in the longitudinal direction you cannot put wherever you want. So, there are restrictions where the CG should be because otherwise you just cannot fly the vehicle. So, but this is for heavy lift ok, it cannot do the same kind of a very highly maneuverable things. So, every vehicle has its pluses and minus of course, the transmission system is complex and you see the tail rotor this rotor is slightly above this rotor because the wake or whatever the disturbance from this should not hit it if it hits then it will its own problem. So, you have these are the basic configurations and of course, there is another configuration which is called the no tar that is no tail rotor ok. That is no tail rotor this is the name they gave ok, but it does not mean that there is no tail rotor what they do they have a jet and they have a Cohen die effect which gives the side force it is like I will draw the picture it will come and then the flow comes out like this and the rotor downwards comes ok. So, one side you get a 
sideboard. This is the rotor and this is the tail cross section. So, you somehow have to gen generate a side force to balance. So, they call it the Coanda effect. You blow the air through a small slit and then there is also a jet at the end. That means, there is a fan inside the tail okay, that blows the air through the tail and the air comes out and that gives the reaction force and then balance. This is called a notar configuration, but it is only for one aircraft, one helicopter that was built. Actually, that is here, this picture, okay. there is no tail rotor here, but there is a fan inside. So, and that is blowing air through this. Okay. Now, these are the configurations, these are the, the last uh, statement. What a helicopter we started with uh, Wilbur Wright. Now, you say if you are in trouble anywhere in the world, an airplane can fly over and drop flowers, but a helicopter can land and save you. That is it. So, this was by Sikorsky in 47. Okay. Now, with this, okay, pretty much the history is over. So, this is all the history. There is, of course, the more information, colorful pictures, they are all there in my other notes, but this is the key. Why I give this spend about an hour on giving a history is to know that lot of people have struggled to build a vehicle, to a successful vehicle has come out. Today it may be Sikorsky has built, but then several people have contributed towards that. That is why it is with the it is not that they were doing it for name or fame or anything like that, it is just the interest to build that is it to fly. Okay. Some preliminaries today with that we will close to today's lecture. Control requirements for a helicopter, because any vehicle we said that for lifting you need power, engine selection is a must. So, you should have a sufficient power to lift number one. Once you have lifted, then comes control. Now, basically you need to control what? Position and orientation. So, it is a 6 degree of rigid body, 3 positions, 3 orientations. Now, that means you can have 6 inputs. I okay. will say, I hey, will give this input, it will control that. If I give another input, I will control that. Unfortunately, human beings, we are restricted with uh, two hands, two legs. So, what happened is, he can give only move these two and both legs. So, the controls are also reduced, okay. but how do you reduce mean? You reduce the number of controls by coupling. That means, if you give one input, it will not do only one function, it will do something else, which may be undesirable, but it will do it. Okay. So, in the helicopter, what are the controls? Okay. I have used four main list down. One is the vertical, that means, you want to go up and down, simple. Okay. That means, the helicopter's altitude is changed only by one control, that control is collective pitch. I have used the word collective pitch, you will slowly understand what is the meaning of collective pitch. As we go along, you will learn, but from a pilot's operation point of view, he will have a lever on his left hand, please understand. That lever will, you will pull it up, pull it down, that is all. If he pulls it up, he is going up, if you push it down, he is coming down. So, that is the collective lever, I will show a schematic. 
Then for directional control, because you need to know which direction you are pointing, that is called the yaw, we know because we are all aerospace engineers, so yaw control, that is by tail rotor pitch angle, because the tail rotor is there, you adjust the side force. So, if you increase, you will turn, you will go this way. So, the tail rotor pitch angle, he controls by pedal. So, his two legs are engaged in controlling only the tail rotor. So, either you will move this way or you will move this way. Okay. So, now we have basically kind of split the two functions, even though later you will understand all of them are coupled. Okay. Then comes longitudinal lateral, that means you want to move forward or you want to move sidewards. But then here, when you want to move forward, what happens is the vehicle also pitches, there is a nose down. How you move a vehicle forward? See, how you move a vehicle go up is you increase the lifting capability. That is, you increase the pitch angle of the blade, that is basically the angle of attack because you all know the basic aerodynamics of an aerofoil. I change the angle of attack of the blade, I get increased lift, so I am going up. But here, I want to go forward. Forward means how do I go? I do not have a propeller to push me forward. So, what is done is this is the difference between the aircraft and the helicopter. The rotor disc, you say you call it the disc, the vector, the force vector, we call it thrust vector. Just for simple, thrust vector is perpendicular to the rotor. Now, I tilt the rotor disc forward. When I tilt the rotor disc forward, my thrust vector is also tilted forward. Okay. As a result, I get a forward component of the force and a vertical component. Vertical component will support the weight, forward component will push me forward. But the problem is, when you tilt the rotor, this is the horizontal thing, I tilt it. So, my thrust is here, initially the CG is right here, it is coming down, I am holding it. Now, what happens because of the tilt, it has gone, I am going to get a moment about the CG. Now, the moment also it will come. Now, if you do not balance the moment properly, then you will have, you cannot control the vehicle. But how the movement is balanced in the helicopter, you see as we go along, you will see, oh, this is a great design. Okay. That is why helicopters, there are, you cannot fly at any high speed. There are various reasons for you cannot fly. Sometimes you cannot trim the vehicle. That means you cannot get an equilibrium. Equilibrium of forces and moments, you cannot achieve that means you cannot fly. Okay. Assuming everything is wonderful. So, this is what you when you want to go forward, you get a coupling of the pitching. Similarly, you can do the lateral, that is why the helicopters has the ability to go in, because this is the disc, I can tilt it this way, I can tilt it this way, any orientation. That means, I can fly in any direction facing in one direction. It is not that I have to turn to the other direction and then fly. Okay. That is the advantage of helicopter. That is, I do not have to turn and then fly. I can just go back. Of course, these are requirements which the user will demand. I want to fly this much uh, forward speed, this much sidewards, okay, all these things. I will give you just a brief background why this is 
See, I, this is I learned when I was discussing with some uh, defense people. See, today helicopters, I said that earlier it was used for uh, evacuation basically. Nowadays, they take the role of attack, okay. they have become a force. Earlier, it was only for you know injured people, emergency evacuation or in the military. The reason was, it was you know, it is a very, very interesting political thing. Russians are very good in tanks because they have a land. The US thought initially the whole the theater of war will be only in Europe. And uh, Russia is a land where they can come through with tanks, but US if they have to come, they have to fly because they cannot bring all the tanks. So, they said we will have a flying tank. What is a flying tank is the attack helicopter. So, now th that is how the concept of attack helicopters themselves have come about because they say that okay, you can hide, you can be below the tree top, then suddenly go up, fire and again you go down or you can go back. Now, the role of the helicopter is completely you now the demands are met more and more because the services say okay, this is good, we will use it for some other reasons. Okay. And uh, of course, today in India you find that any floods, anything means only you see helicopter going around and then picking people coming because that is one of the major uses. If, because they can go hover and use even in the what is that, that terrorist attack in Bombay, how they landed on the rooftop again the helicopter because you cannot take an aircraft and then parachute them because you do not know where they will go and sit. So, okay, that is slithering. So, the demands you see they are all different types. So, they meet that is why today helicopters have become an important flying vehicle like an aircraft. It has its own utility which cannot be met by an aircraft, conventional aircraft. So, you can see the development of helicopters and the demand for helicopters has started increasing tremendously. Now, if you see in the defense side, army wants the helicopter. You will say army wants tanks and other things, why do they want to fly? Because now, the majority of the helicopters are operated by army because they want to use it as a flying tank type of thing. Of course, Air Force has its own utility. Then Navy, because they want ship based operation. Okay. Now, when I said contra rotating rotor, usually Navy operates. The reason is, it is compact. So, they can keep it and stow on a ship. So, the size is small. Okay. So, demand for helicopter has gone of course, the defense has a tremendous demand. In the civilian side, yes, the demand is there because if you future, that is what uh, now air transportation, US normally says okay, the city traffic has gone too much, if you take uh, 2 hours to reach your airport means you fly 5 minutes, you go there, you land. But of course, you pay enormous money because helicopters flying is not cheap. Okay. Commercial helicopter, if you say 1 hour of flight will cost 50,000 rupees of that order. Okay. But still, lot of uh, business people use the helicopters because if they want to go instead of uh, going from Bombay, lot of people have because they do not want to go from Bombay to Pune or wherever their factory is. They hire a helicopter, morning they go, maybe couple of lakhs, then they come back. So, utility is going. Of course, there are problems. Now, offshore, which is a civilian operation you need to go and then put the personnel only with the helicopters or you have to send them by ship. So, that is why the helicopter utility is growing, but it is a very complex vehicle. At the end of the course, today you may not know what is the complexity, this is the, this is what one, one complexity is basic thing. You have a disc, you want to tilt it. Okay. 
because I, I said with words, hey, this is the thrust, you just tilt the thrust. Good. How do you do it? That is the next question. Okay. Because you know that if I tilt it, I will fly forward. Of course, it gives me a coupling of pitch and coupling of roll also. But how do I tilt it? I can't take the whole shaft. Please understand, there is one way. The propeller is rotating, tilt the shaft. That is one way. This is called the tilt rotor, which you say I showed that tilt rotor. That means you have the rotor, you shift, you actually rotate the shaft. This is one way. Another way is I do not want to rotate the shaft but the disc must do this. Okay. In conventional helicopters, that is what is done. The shaft is not rotated, please understand. Shaft is kept in its orientation, but you tilt the plane of rotation of the rotor disc. Okay. How it is achieved, that we will learn as we go along because these are all their dynamics, how it is. So, now you know when you have longitudinal lateral motion, the input that is called cyclic pitch. Okay. So, we had a collective, collective pitch, tail rotor pitch, cyclic pitch. We will explain what cyclic everything is, but how cyclic pitch is given? The pilot has a stick in front, he will move the stick forward. Okay. That means, if he moves forward, he will go forward. If he moves lateral, he will go lateral. If he goes this way, he will go this way. If he goes this way, he will go back. Okay. So, this stick he can move in any direction 360, he can actually churn. So, left hand, right hand, leg all are engaged for the pilot to fly. Okay. I think I leave you now. Hmm?